Oh, the other thing is that's on the hot circuit. That's a USB. And we're back. This segment is brought to you by Anapsis, the leading provider of solutions to protect ERP systems from cyber attacks. Customers can secure their SAP and Oracle business critical platforms from espionage, cybotage, and financial fraud risks. Visit them on the web at anapsis.com. And by Pony Express, check out the Community Edition and turn your Nexus 7 into a lean, mean pen testing machine for all those hard to reach places. There's Pony Express. Visit them on the web at Pony Express. Dot com and by Black Hills Information Security, the leaders in penetration testing and active defense. Email consulting at blackhillsinfosec.com and request a quote today. And we're back. My first story, I'm being told that Radio Shack is about to sell out. Is that true? Did anyone else read this? No more Radio Shack? Or Radio Shack is preparing to file bankruptcy? Oh, jeez. I, I didn't know Radio Shack still existed, to be honest with you. <laughs> Space Rock, didn't you build like your first computer with Radio, Radio Shack, Shack parts? Yeah, am I on? Can you hear me? I can hear you, yes. All right, awesome. Because Radio Shack, you know, they have answers and so do we. Or they have questions and so do we. That's, Either way. True. Either <laughs> way. <laughs> they have both the questions and the answers. I don't know what we're going to do. This is going to be an excellent episode. Once <laughs> they file bankruptcy. Um. So it's a tra- it's there's, a travesty. there's a couple <laughs> of new laws being proposed, one of which is a federal, and I don't know if these two are tied together, but there is a new federal uh, law that is being proposed, hasn't passed yet, um, that if you're breached and this new law passes, that you will have 30 days to notify your customers who have been affected by the breach. Is this a good thing? Is it a bad thing? Some states have similar legislation. Has it worked? What do you guys think? I, I think Mr. Jeff Mann has opinions on this. Mr. Jeff Mann, welcome back to Security Weekly. I want to hear your thoughts hey. on this. I have some follow-up questions as well, so don't don't go crazy. So uh, I, I'm not sure it's a good thing. I think it's baby steps by the government trying to, you know, trying to begin to regulate the payment card industry. Um, already companies, if they're breached... They have to report to the card brands immediately. Um, of course, most of the time, the retailers are finding out they're b- being breached by the card brands themselves, letting them know that. Mm-hmm. So, so I'm not sure what the point of the legislation is, frankly. Is it? Does this protect? Well, I, the I can con- tell you what the point is. Go ahead. The point is to try to unify the various states' disclosure laws. Because right now you have 50 different states with 50 different laws, and companies are like, what the hell are we supposed to do? Yeah, we can't right, do right. 50 different states' laws. And so they're trying to unify it under one federal law. But unfortunately, like Jeff said, most companies don't even know they're breached until 90 days later when the FBI calls them up and says, hey, you're a common point of purchase. You've been breached. Do, is, and, this, is this law intended to protect the consumer? Does it accomplish that in any way, shape, form, or fashion? You guys still there? <laughs> I think we just hear birds tweeting. I think we lost yeah. them. Did we lose them? I, I, I think lost them. Oh, we were just getting into it, too. It was just it was getting good. You know what I'm saying? It, uh, so, uh, Joff, Carlos, what's your thoughts? I didn't have any opinions on this. I just had questions <laughs> on this particular one. Um, does this really uh, protect the consumer? And is that at the expense of the merchant or organization that has the breach? Yeah, for, for, from my side, after reading everything the way I see it is, it's a proposal. It's not a law. It's something yeah. that so, may happen if he gets the backing for it. Uh, but after reading all of the wording, it, it is just too general. It's just too open it, to interpretation. So I think we need to kind to. Uh, let it pass a bit more time and see what their final draft on this is. Because right now, as it stands, uh, it's hard to pinpoint why are they doing it. Um, I think it was kind of like, and forgive my English, a half-assed kind of solution that they came up with. Like, hey, we need to cover cyber. This is important. Let's see what we can come up with here. 
and let's put it in the broadest terms possible and that's what they actually presented I, I it's kind of weird because we already have some stuff like Space Rogue mentioned with credit cards mm -hmm. and at the, other uh, at the other side what happens to those companies that are not regulated by credit cards now they have 30 days but what happens if I'm not ready to inform in 30 days I'm still investigating if it really happened or not how does that even get covered? There are some other parts in terms of no, the information of the breach. How is it shared? Uh, for example, uh, right now the way it is stated is there's a breach, there's a password dump, they place it in BitTorrent, they place it in Pastebin and every, uh, everywhere else. And if I click on the link to any of those uh, sites, I'm breaking the law. If I send over to you one of those URLs just by the mere fact of me getting that URL and sending it over to you, hey, take a look at this, I'm breaking the law. So it's very, very broad. Yeah, that was really funny because I think uh, it sounded like, first of all, that Carlos said by the mere fact of getting that girl and sending it to you, I'm breaking the law, which um, that was kind of <laughs> funny. But I think I think he meant URL, so that's okay. <laughs> yeah, URL. As long as the URL is of legal age, we're good. Jack? Yeah. <laughs> I, I, but, first of all, pro the, tip. Uh, Hold on, let Jack, hold on, Jeff. Let, Jeff. let Jack speak. I'll come back to you, I promise. All right, all right. Well, Pro that, tip, if you're uh, moving a laptop around and sharing it with people that aren't familiar with a strange place to put the power button, you might want to warn them first. Uh, but I'm back now. So. I'm sorry. <laughs> Good uh, Lord. Um, so I have two, I have about this disclosure thing, I have two worries. And one is that the, you know, the 46 or 47 states that have unique disclosure laws already have those laws and they're enforceable via interstate commerce clause. So they actually have some enforceability that m may not be superseded by a federal law. So this could add to the complexity. Uh, that needs to be worked out. And if it is worked out and the federal law does indeed supersede all of the state laws, then my fear is that in past attempts to do these sort of breach disclosure laws at the federal level, uh, th various industry groups have um, have bought Congress. I mean, ex uh, lobbied extensively to have uh, exclusions, and so huge swaths of industry and enterprise have been excluded in earlier versions. And so, in you know, in, in various iterations. Things like payment card was excluded because PCI covered them, or healthcare was excluded because that was different and scary. Uh, so, you know, we really need to see what the the actual details of this look like. But I can see how this could, instead of simplifying it, make it worse. Um, and I, thirty days is, yeah. I, let's wait and see. I'm 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 confident that our politicians will, as always, represent us well. The problem with the 30 days thing is that there will be a multitude of exceptions. One will be if there's an ongoing law enforcement investigation mm -hmm. and they ask people to not reveal the fact that they are have been breached. And I, Or if you are an actual government organization, I'm sure there will be a loophole for that. Yep. Uh, and it, there, just be, there will be so many loopholes that it won't matter. Yep. Joff, did you have comments? Uh, well, I, you know, my, my thought immediately is that... Um, uh, I hate to be negative, Nelly here, but it it sounds like it is more political popularity right now than than anything else. And I think the second uh, leg of this is um, what Jeff had brought up, and I believe that there probably is an intent to try to unify um, the laws, but it's just not really well spelled out. So um, yeah, yeah, Jeff, I'm, please I'm, you know leave the job of negative Nelly to Mr. Jeff Man, Space Rog, and Jack because. <laughs> Like, otherwise, we'll be drowning. Our, 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 otherwise, they won't have anything else to do. Positive. They won't know what to do if we do that job. No, that's I know. I, I got to play my role. I don't even know what my role is, but uh, it, it does. It does <laughs> jelly, seem like jelly roll. <laughs> <laughs> it does seem Whoa. like it's a little bit of uh, popularism uh, going on right now. Um, as is, uh, without getting too political, as is the um, all right. The oh, so administration and while we're on while we're on the political front let's talk about president obama's war on hackers as it's been dubbed in the press now that's now this is personal right basically 
there is pending legislation that wants to criminalize us for access to any breach data, password database, and a whole host of other things. How does everyone feel about that? Uh, too generalized. <laughs> Again, yeah. right. politicians. I mean, yeah. it, I think it's for us, just like um, the the significant degradation of the Fourth Amendment, I think it has uh, real um, concerns uh, for this community. We do valuable research um, that is not well recognized at high levels of government um, and I think it's just yet one more reason to put your you know, money, time, and effort behind EFF because they're the, the closest thing we've got to a lobby against this kind of idiocy. And not only that, but we have already seen what happens when the law is so general. We saw what happened to Orange Schwartz. We've seen how it has been used to go after other people and all of a sudden go like, hey, we're going to put you so in, um, we're going to give you so many years in jail uh, that you're going to make a rapist blush. You know, uh, you, you can actually uh, um, sometimes when you see these prosecutors go after researchers and hackers and activists, they're going for maximum penalties and they kind of start piling stuff on, and they end up with a kind of substantial number of years as punishment, even more than what you would have gotten for shooting somebody. Yeah, um, the new law makes it a felony to traffic in information like passwords, where trafficking includes posting a link. Y yep, and that's got, uh, I imagine just as being a former a government employee. <laughs> I'm shocked and, and, that you guys are questioning the integrity and the in the, the intent of the federal government that's just trying well, to help out. It's, isn't this the same government that decided to put who uh, I'm not going to mention his name in charge of? everything for NASA and this is the guy that doesn't believe in science and doesn't believe that dinosaurs exist existed well, no. and some have all extended that other these stuff. but some has extended these new laws to make it uh, illegal to retweet or even clicking on the links that lead to the so called illegal information or, or how do they put it access unauthorized information. I mean, Can that has to be the most one of the most open-ended laws I've ever read in my entire life. I mean, yeah. is is this not close to no, outlawing like our industry? Yeah, yeah. Can, can, can you imagine close, yourself trying to close write your laptop a statement or just of, give a statement it to of work for a pen test that covers all of this stuff that actually covers your back? And you imagine trying to write that SOW with a lawyer? That's going to be a mess because let's say, okay, I did a password dump and. Here's the information from the password dump that we did. This is only a snapshot. I'm only showing you the usernames and the customer's piss or something happens and, hey, you broke the law. Well, no, it's part of my assessment. No, you broke the law. Now you got to go back to your SOW. You never, uh, I don't trust many times customers. They can get pissy. They will they'll grab at anything to uh, get out of pain or pain more or pain what they're supposed to. Now, and um, it's going to be hard. Uh, you wait Robert Graham of the Erratic blog states that Obama is proposing to upgrade hacking to a racketeering offense, which means you can be guilty of being a hacker by simply acting like a hacker without otherwise committing a specific crime. I don't know if I necessarily agree with that statement, but certainly tying it to... It's a rather rob, so... Yeah, yeah, that's a bit of a stretch. you got to do a lot more... Yeah. And I'm not a lawyer, and I don't pretend to be one either. But from my understanding, we do a lot more to, to prove a racketeering offense. Um, certainly, I think if they were to enact this law and somehow start to prove racketeering, others that were involved with hacking groups could certainly fall victim and probably receive stiffer penalties under racketeering. I don't think racketeering just means by you're guilty by association. Yeah, my, my biggest worry is how is it going to be abused when you piss off people with right. your research? Right. Uh, we have. I remember Microsoft back in the day sending lawyers after people that actually exposed vulnerabilities to them, uh, and we saw it from ISS and we saw it from Cisco. And but those are but those aren't criminal. Uh, those aren't criminal but charges. Those are Google those are civil. And Microsoft. Yeah, those but are civil with charges. the new rules, with the new law, the way it's written right now, the recommendations that can actually become. A crime, depending how they actually interpret that. Yeah, like, they'd have hey, the lobby have, first 
for criminal charges. Yeah, so, so, so I'm, the statement is back then they sent out the lawyers, they were pissed, and they wanted to kind of make you shut up and not expose that data. Now though, what they can do is you can just go to the FBI and to the federal prosecutors and say, they're breaking the law and they'll go after you that way and that's even scarier. I can deal with a lawyer telling me, no, you got to shut up, uh, I'm going to get a gag order versus getting a prosecutor going like, I'm going to put you in jail and you're going to be pounded in the ass for so long, I was gonna you're going to regret ever doing this. Brings new meaning to gag order. Space Rogue. So, yes, Paul. What can I do for you? Do you have opinions on this proposed legislation that essentially means hacking is a crime no matter what we do? I, I'm actually um, withholding my opinion until it actually gets to the point where it's going to become law. Mm-hmm. Right now, it's just kind of a proposal. Mm-hmm. It hasn't been, it even really been announced yet. Um, I mean, we have lobbied for CFAA reform for a long time. Now we've got it. Uh, it is slightly better than some of the other proposals that have been proposed in the past. This one does have issues, as we have just discussed, uh, but and hopefully those issues can be worked out in the near future. But until we actually have something that's going to be a bill and is going to be made law or a uh, a executive order, then I, I'm hoping that we still have time to change the minds of the people in charge. And I'm having a really hard time with the people in the background. <laughs> I am too. <laughs> wow! For sure. I, talk about I cannot see him. <laughs> so, has anybody actually um, read the content of the proposal that's on the White House website? What are you? Are you insane, John? Of course, it. we haven't read it. <laughs> I've read bits and pieces. Yeah, and, and, and that's why. Well, that's, that's why just I agree the reason with I haven't read it and is because it's a, it's a proposal. Yeah, it hasn't actually come out as being the definitive. Like this is what we're going to do. It's kind of like, here's a proposal, what does everybody think? So I think it's important for people to discuss it and say what they think, mm-hmm. and hopefully we can make some changes where necessary and get the reform that we actually want. Now, uh, Amen. My biggest I mean, worry is uh, now's the actually, time. Now is yes, the time. Yes, now is definitely the time. Yeah. Hey, I, 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 my biggest worry is who is going to actually consult with all of the senators, who are going to be the lobbyists and who's going to put the money to convince them to hey, look at did what you know that Space story. Rogue testified in front of Congress once? Did you know that? I was drunk. <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> hey, do you guys remember um, Corel Draw? You remember that program? Yes, there's a vulnerability yep. in Corel Draw. There's bigger stories to fry this week, Paul. Oh, come on. Corel Draw? How yeah, cool? Like, did you I read? know it's 9 million users or something, right? 100 million. A hundred million. Uh, there's users. no way a hundred million users still use. Corel they Draw. say that there's a hundred million users of Corel I, software. I believe Doodle. it when I see it. No, the it, company is called Chris Doodleware. Doodleware. <laughs> That's the parent company. It's called Doodleware. I can I can imagine that there's been a hundred million copies sold throughout history in China. There's not an installed <laughs> base of current users of a hundred million of Corel Draw. No, there's no way. Yeah, uh, no uh, way. I, I, I feel like the same five. way. Just like when we see Bernie Bullish for Corel. I'll give you ten. Ten. But yeah, there's what a remote uh, uh, DLL injection. Yeah, what it sounds big, like. Yeah, you can just pretty much load it. Yeah, any vulnerabilities DLL. are a dime a dozen. Do you have a WordPress vuln you want to talk about, Paul? No, I don't this week. You don't have a WordPress vuln this I week. I got I got Instagram flashed you got, your that's private a disclosure app. You know, that's it, that's another big topic this week. Perverts on Instagram is what is what the article headline, but it turns out it's just like every other image hosting type site that has a vulnerability where if you can guess the precise and obscured URL. You can get sensitive photos if you. Whoop! Uh, did yeah, if you been doing that for twenty years. Brute force it. Yeah. Hey, what does the yeah. sign say? Retro nineties only on all Security Weekly. Loft found that a long time ago. I yeah. think. We, uh, there's another big story this week that you've totally missed. Okay, tell me what it is. It happened on Sunday. What's that? I wrote about it on Tuesday. You wrote about it on Tuesday. What was it's, that? It's Sunday, Microsoft came out with a big blog. Oh they yeah. They called Google a bunch of duty head faces. They did. Was that their exact wording? Did your duty well, I, I'm paraphrasing. Okay. <laughs> it's important to note. I didn't because because Google was like, "Hey, Microsoft, uh, you're not doing things the way I want you to. So, duty face on you." Oh, so they had uh, they're having a penis waving contest, is what it sounds. They're like. having they're having a pissing contest. Yeah. Can I say that word on your show, pissing? Well, I just did. I, yeah. I, yeah. Yeah. So you know. Damn it! He said pissing. 
Google found go a vulnerability in Microsoft stuff, gave 90 days. Microsoft, two vulns. Microsoft said, hey, look, can you wait till our next patch Tuesday? Google said, no, and we're just going to release stuff to the wild and let it out. Um, and, and, of course, Microsoft had to respond and say, what the hell, Google? We just asked for a couple more days. And so, like, these guys are, like, pointing fingers back and forth at each other over a vulnerability that this should not be. I can't believe we're still debating this crap 20 years later. Like, it's the same stupid debate. Kind of like the Corel Draw vulnerability. Federal government. They had the ability to. State. Vulnerability disclosure. Corel Draw had a vulnerability, uh -huh. like we talked about <laughs> earlier. And Stunned. Core this, Security this, told them so, about it. And so then they said, if you're not going to fix it, we're going to release it. And then they released it anyway, which is part of that story, which I forgot because Space World had me move <laughs> on to obviously more important things like Google and Microsoft. Who cares? There's a vulnerability in Corel Draw, damn it! <laughs> Listen, we we're, we have crypto wars because the imbecile that runs that thinks he runs the UK wants to outlaw all encryption that doesn't have backdoors. We have Microsoft shipping crappy patches, although none of this month's yet have broken anything I've heard of. We have disclosure debates. It's somebody found the DeLorean and and loaded it up, and it's twenty years ago. And I still have hair on top of my head instead of just my face. You know what, Jack? There is some truth to that because this year is 2015. And if you remember... And we have a vulnerability in Corel Draw. Are you happy, Paul? Are you yeah, happy? we have a vulnerability in Corel Draw. But if you remember, the DeLorean goes to the future. And it you know is what? The Corel Draw vulnerability was properly so. disclosed. That makes all the difference. Uh, but so uh, the Microsoft uh, blog post that there tantrum was, uh, is actually that patrolling. Called, it was responsible. It was coordinated leaders. Coordinated disclosure. Oh. Coordinated. coordinated. Yeah, coordinated vulnerability. vulnerability disclosure. Like what the? That's like made up. That's like make me feel good stuff. Yeah, well, that's that way. <laughs> wow, you made WTF that PG space. Oh, I knew where you were going with that. Um, that this is make me feel good. <laughs> what is that? That looks good. What is that? Yeah, it's very good. Um, Top of 23. Jack, I have a story in there for you about Marriott agreeing to stop blocking guest Wi-Fi devices. Marriott paid six hundred thousand dollars in fines last year for blocking that's, customers' Wi-Fi devices. That's really devices. Handy, considering where the four of us are sitting. Yeah, <laughs> I just thought I'd let you know that if they're blocking it, they're lying in this article. But they said they wouldn't block it anymore. They had to pay. Uh, um, they were charging conference exhibitors anywhere from two hundred fifty to a thousand dollars per device. Yeah, to the reason the, they, they weren't going to block it anymore is because they were threatened with a fine of a bazillion dollars. They were, and yeah, they were. Oh, they're like, oh, we're not going to pay that, so we just won't block it anymore. Yeah, and I bet you they still will. And they called it the Gaylord Wi-Fi service. The Gaylord. That's what they called it. They is said. That again? They were charging two hundred fifty to a thousand dollars per device to use the Gaylord Wi-Fi service. The only place that actually did this that got caught was the Gaylord Oprylands, the Gaylord oh, yes. in Nashville, and so they were trying to push it out more. And but this has brought up an interesting debate, which is: is it when you <laughs> when you deauth? networks that shouldn't be wireless networks that shouldn't be in your office you're actually by a strict interpretation violating FCC regulations because you're interfering with unlicensed airspace and and um, I'm gonna hand the phone to spay the phone the, the wow. thing I'm holding microphone I don't know why they call it micro it's really big uh, <laughs> That's what she said. The problem with DOF is that if I'm, I'm not mistaken, I'm not on the DEF CON uh, wireless committee, the guys that run the DEF CON network, but I think they use the same thing to kick off rogue access points off the DEF CON network. So where does that leave them? Carlos, what do you think? <laughs> Carlos, is, Carlos, are you there? Carlos is in the bathroom right now, I think. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's what he thinks. He went, and well, that's what he said. I think he's off flying his new RF helicopter thing that he bought. No, wait, wait. Drone. It is, it is very drone. common in vendor wireless products today. Oh, the the top level products, the yeah, enterprise yeah. stuff. But what got Marriott, they use the auth all the time. But what got Marriott in trouble is that you're bringing your own personal hotspot with you. They're de authing that and then charging you to use their wireless, the Gaylord wireless. Keep, keep talking, Paul, because we're just we don't know what to say. I know. Well, it's tough to you know. It's podcasting after you finish the first bottle of scotch. That's you know, <laughs> I've been there. I, I I totally get it. I lost count. <laughs> <laughs> oh. 
<laughs> yeah, but weren't you focusing on the point that if you we, even we, transmit a deauth frame I'm ago, in and I think wireless we, airspace, you're potentially violating FCC, right? But our major wireless vendors are already doing that, right? On a on a on a regular basis. The minute you turn on rogue detection, you're transmitting deauth frames for anything that comes in well, the space. Of your wireless network, if it's detected on the wired side as well, in most vendors' case. In other words, if you're on the wired network of that institution and you're a rogue, then you're <laughs> out of here. Right? And, uh, just what, I, what the hell am I saying? Because nobody's listening anyway, so yeah, it's all right. Let's take the mic. My cocktail sucked tonight, huh? I get to do this every week. Carlos, Carlos, what do you think? <laughs> <laughs> Did he have his mic on yet? Is he back? Oh, how was, how was your bathroom visit? How was your bathroom uh, visit? It was good. It was good. Okay. Everything, I'm going. as long as everything I'm came out okay. Um, I'm going. Yeah, my toddler was banging. I hope everybody who's listening to this is drunk as we, is, uh, we are. Otherwise, yes, we this is, is going to be terrible. Wow. Have you heard about the skeleton? Insert your skeleton key. That's what it says. Carlos, Joff, you guys heard about this? You guys are. Phone away from me. <laughs> Malware that gets in memory on your domain controller and allows attackers to authenticate as any user with a given password. Did you guys read about that one or no? I have not. Well, that's what it does. It's an interesting article. You should read it, Carlos, because it's extremely interesting. And I believe... Is that, is that the one that affects Corel Draw? No, it is not a Corel Draw. This actually affects the much less popular target of Microsoft <laughs> Active Directory, <laughs> Jeff. And it's from the 90s! <laughs> Was he talking to me? Oh, this has a great write-up from Dell SecureWorks, uh, the researchers who discovered the skeleton key type malware, uh, which I thought was kind of a cool... I thought that was kind of a neat trick. I was like, I wish I had thought of that on a pen test. We need to start naming vulnerabilities with better names. I know we have, like, Heartbleed and stuff, but we need to have, like, the Paul Asadorian vulnerability or the Jeff Mann vulnerability. And I would totally spell mine with two S's. Yeah, with <laughs> it. Or Z. Of Why course. don't you go with Z? Did you, know my, did you know my middle name was Jack? Did you know that, Space Rug? Your, your middle name is Pound? What? Pound? <laughs> what? It's actually, it's an Irish name. It's called Dickon. I, I'm sorry, Paul. I, I, I had that. <laughs> I, somebody gave me the mic back, and I apologize. <laughs> Production assistants are laughing hysterically. Uh, Lizard sorry. Squad's DDoS for higher service was built on <laughs> hacked home routers. If you think home routers can't be used for attacks because they're resource you just efficient. Put us on at this point. <laughs> Hackers have boasted on Twitter the site is built on somewhere between 250,000 to 500,000 infected yeah, routers. And at one point last week, it purported serving 900 million requests all on hacked home routers. And if you thought routers aren't being hacked because they're not exposed to the Internet on the WAN port, think again because there's 250 to 500,000 that did some damage. Hey, I think Paul, have you heard about the 19,000 web attacks in France? I have not. It was a statement by whoever's in charge of their cyber defense that they've had 19,000 web face attacks in the last day or since the, the Paris attacks. I want to know what they define an attack as. Do they define them as, as ping requests, as port scans, or are these actual like attacks? And does I, France have breach notification laws? Conceivably, 19,000 could be... 19,000 so quickly. 19,000 could be low. I mean, that was an hour I know when I worked it. at the it university. 30 days. And why was it only websites? What, what about all the other sites? Well, actually, the line I read at the, that was, hack, hackers, quote-unquote, have targeted about 19,000 French websites, which is about quite a different website. statement. Ha hackers all of a sudden decided that they don't like France. Well, yeah, there are a lot of people that don't like France. You know, Freedom Fries, JavaScript in French. <laughs> uh, all right. I, I don't know. Oh, you got to take over. <laughs> Fading fast Wait. over here. Why do I have to take over? Every oh. other goddamn time you came on the show, you took over. I thought I was going to relax this segment. Now, all of a sudden, I have to take over. Jesus <laughs> Christ. Uh, so, why on earth... Since I'm taking over now, Space Rogue, thanks for that. Why on earth is IBM still making mainframes? Does anyone know? Does anyone know <laughs> what IBM's strategy is now for producing the mainframes? Do you know? Anyone? I, I know. 
Okay, because Joff read the show notes. Joff, <laughs> why is IBM still doing the mainframe thing? Well, it, it, it's so that they can put their smartest machine on, to- uh, on, uh, on quiz shows and win so that everybody feels belittled by no. a computer. Eh, wrong. <laughs> it's up. Gigantic it's up. mainframes, right? <laughs> they can do however kajillion computing operations in a nanosecond. They are now integrating th- with them with things like apps, the cloud, BYOD, and embedded devices through your like mainframe. We, they want the mainframe to be the brain behind all of these apps and cloud devices, according to What do market. you think the cloud is? Everything just got concentrated again. This, this industry goes in circles, <sighs> yeah, my friend. Just, if you, you have to read the article in the show notes. Why on earth is IBM still making mainframes? It's actually pretty freaking hilarious. In any case, Joff, did you have stories? I'm sorry. I did, but but actually, um, space got the jump on me because I was going to talk about Google spilling the beans and then Microsoft not being so happy about it. It was it was actually funny how Microsoft worded it because it there are a bunch a, of little kids in the playground. Yeah, it it really was. And it's an old really debate. Like I don't understand why we're still having this debate. Why can't they do things the way they're supposed to and act properly and just coordinate things? Well, I used a bad word there. I'm sorry. Just talk to each other and be nice, right? Space, do you know how yeah, disturbing it is? Why can't people be to each other and not be Google and Microsoft? Space, do you know yeah. how disturbing it is for you to hear you say, "Well, there's kids in the playground." That's that's very very disturbing phrase to hear you say. Please don't well, ever say that again. I, I'm sorry if I, it was a trigger word for you. <laughs> but seeing as the stage is now mine, that the FBI right now, is watching us. <laughs> Seeing as the stage was mine right now, I just I, I just don't understand how we're having the same freaking debate. 20 years later about how to release vulnerabilities when the end goal that everybody wants is to get stuff fixed. Because right? oh, I hope ago. that's the end goal. That's my end goal is to get stuff fixed. But instead, I'm going to hand the mic to Brock. 20, 20 years ago, most of us were in high school? I want to talk about one other story I've got. And it's not really a story. It's, it's a gadget. And you all probably saw this if you're reading your InfoSec news. <laughs> but um, there's a story on Keysweeper, which is an awesome little stealthy Arduino-based device. <laughs> I am the news, exactly. Camouflaged <laughs> as a functioning USB wall charger, it wirelessly it. and passively sniffs, decrypts, and logs over GSM keystrokes from any Microsoft wireless keyboard. Kind of cool. And, and uh, Sammy's got this thing um, disguised inside of a little USB charger box. All nicely fits in there, and it's even got a battery in there, and bada-bing, bada-boom, you've got GSM transmissions of your wireless keystrokes coming out as text uh, or data. I think he had a little web interface there as well that captures stuff, which is a very, very cool little gadget. Um, And it's simply because the actual proprietary encoding, which is 2.4 gigahertz on these wireless keyboards... Um, was effectively just an XOR under the cover. So, kind of cool. All right, that's it. That's my story. I found another article... reporting to the cyber police! (laughs) On (laughs) four... This is a prediction post. One of the things that caught my eye was that the author writes about how he was stopped at the intersection of Snowden River Parkway and... Broken Land Drive. I know that place. Jack, do you, you know where I'm talking about, right? You and I have spent yes, I do. a whole heck of a lot of time at the intersection between that place Snowden Paul. River Parkway. Every time I hear Broken Land Drive, I hear it in the GPS drive, in the GPS voice, right? Broken Land Parkway. Uh, that's how I hear it in my head. Anyway, this person was there, and he has four mm. predictions as to disruptive data security boondoggles, as he calls them, that we're likely to see happen this year. First, air traffic loss of control. Nope. Who, not going to happen. Who said not no? Happen. Why? Why wouldn't this happen? They're computers. They can be hacked. We've been doing that since the late 80s. Wait, you, just because there's no air traffic control. This happened recently, actually. We lost air traffic control at a recent airport, and they went back to paper. Right? They were writing flight information down on paper to land the planes. It's really hard to fax the paper to the airplane as it lands. <laughs> we, can, we can deal without the computers. Yeah, it's a little hairy, and it takes a little bit more time, but even it's not going to, planes aren't going to fall out of the sky. We, we thought that was going to happen at Y2K. It didn't happen. Not going to happen now. 
Wow, you're next, just full of... What's the next boondoggle? You're, you're full of nostalgic information. Y2K. <laughs> I love this. Like hey, the 90s. This is the retro the, 90s This is the retro show. <laughs> Spygate 2.0. Major sports franchises will do anything to get a leg up. That's the other prediction. Didn't that happen with the Patriots like 10 years ago? Yeah, and but yeah, exactly. Patriots aren't the, all right. The Patriots aren't the only team to do that either. So they are. <laughs> Patriots had Spygate ten years ago. So like, what's the next? What's the next? I I don't know. There's some Windows ninety five. There's some Windows ninety five for you. Thank you, thank you. You're Big welcome. Farmers bitter pill. The pharmaceutical industry spends millions of dollars on drugs, and bad actors manipulating trial data are spilling unique plans could be one of the huge data thief stories in 2015. So we're yeah, talking about sig- data espionage. Pro- there company. is a significant profit motive there. That is likely to happen, I believe. Yeah, North Korea did it. Uh, that it's brings on to his it. last one, open espionage. Um, the big takeaways from this year or last year, I guess, was uh, this year, Sony potential financially, a uh, fiscally impressive brand name to be knocked down a few pegs. But espionage will continue. Let, in let, set. Let's face it. All right, there's massive espionage going on between everybody: China, Russia, the U.S. Everybody is in everybody else's systems, stealing all the data in the financial systems. And Jack's playing sound clips from the '90s <laughs> in the background, which you can't hear. But the, the, the espionage is not new. It's been going on for a while. It's going to continue to go on. It's not going to change. This is not an, uh, a boondoggle. It's just that's the way things are. Okay, moving on to the next story. Did you know there was an entire conference on passwords? Yes, it's at B side Las Vegas, isn't it? No, the Norway. international it's Norway. There was Norway. Thank you. Yeah, international see, I, conference no. on passwords. I did know that they do it twice a year. It is twice a one year. One in Vegas, one in Norway. Interesting. Interesting. You, don't ask me if I know stuff, Paul. I know it. Okay. Well then, you should <laughs> check out the videos that I linked to in the show notes because there's some interesting talks there. Um, what else? Oh, s- there was an article <laughs> about um, in RFC. Why are we talking about anything when passwords are still a problem? I thought we were getting rid of passwords. You're going to replace them with like facial recognition or something. Oh, that's not the 90s. Sorry. You, th- you mean that's one thing they didn't actually talk about in the 90s? Well, 90s was biometrics. We talked about it. Uh, What's your- Story, Paul. I, I haven't really read this story. I'm reaching here, uh, space. But there was RFC 7435 that argues the way current systems fail is a discouragement to good security. A binary failure. It's an RFC? There is an RFC. This is security services that work, that work reliably when not under attack are likely to be deployed and enabled by default. Well, uh, RFCs have changed since the, the 90s. The article title says security don't bother until it's needed. Don't bother with security until it's needed. Yeah. How well, do you know I, when it's needed? I did read I did read part of that RFC when I saw right, it. Oh wait, who's okay. this else camera here? Good. I'm glad Joff. Carlos, read it. who's that there? Is that your daughter? No, yep. she's out of frame now. Come on. But right. Paul, when I read it, a, a lot of the intent of the RFC appears to be talking <coughs> about um, the 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 ability for software to have opportunistic uh, security. Um, but not required security. So that that's a little disappointing. But the example given in the RFC is actually the um, the start TLS mechanism in in SMTP, for example. Um, that it that you know SMTP can still be transmitted plain text, but if TLS is there and start TLS succeeds, then the option to be negotiated encrypted is there. Um, so I didn't quite finish the entire RFC. I'm not quite sure what the point was other than to drive home um, the idea that um, um, security was n- not always necessary in always cases, all cases, but if, if there was a switch mechanism to enable it, it should be included. Carlos, what's your daughter wearing on her head? Tinfoil uh, hat. No, a uh, stuffed tiger. Sweet. Yep. Anyone want to take very, a crack at the four mega vulnerabilities hiding in plain sight that would... And I quote, provide God mode access to 90% of the internet for 15 years. That can only be somebody that's from the loft crack that can bring down the internet in 30 minutes or less. You had to make a 90s reference, huh? So these 
this article is stating that there are four vulnerabilities, all of which are roughly 15 years old or been in existence for 15 years. Have they been properly disclosed? And they've all been properly disclosed. Those are Heartbleed, Shellshock, Windshock, which is the Windows OLE Automation Array Remote Code Execution Vulnerability, and the Kerberos Checksum Vulnerability are four vulnerabilities that essentially allow you God mode to 90% of the internet. I agree, but why... I agree, but why hasn't it happened yet? Who, why hasn't nobody taken down the internet with these vulnerabilities? Well, would you take it down or take it over? Taking it down is one thing. Neither one has happened. How do you right? know someone hasn't taken it over? Well, I think we'd know if somebody used the Kerberos vulnerability to take over the internet. That'd be, yeah. Well, yeah, yeah, right. Yeah, yeah, you know. And so, yeah, I mean, these have been patched. Uh, people haven't implemented the patches, which is an ongoing, long term problem since the 70s. We're going to go way retro now. Right? So people still don't apply the patches, and we're still worried about zero days in APT. <laughs> That's, it is pretty funny. Because how many of the, more of these vulnerabilities are out there that we're missing? We, oh as security God. researchers, we're missing them, and we're putting the Internet at risk. How will people get their porn if there are these vulnerabilities lurking out there that could allow someone to take down the Internet? Because I remember someone testified in front of Congress and said someone could take down the Internet. Who was that? But I'm married now. So mm -hmm. go with India, India. They're not responding to me now. Oh, sorry, Paul. We had a side conversation. What was your question? I don't remember now. <laughs> <laughs> I know you tried to take over your show. But I had this moment. It was a beautiful moment. Something about someone took we down the internet. We need to be back in studio. That's the problem. There are these vulnerabilities out there and someone taking down the internet and then someone testified against Congress and said they could take down the internet. And now yeah, we had a vulnerability in BGP, yeah. But there could be more of these vulnerabilities that we as security sure researchers haven't found. Yeah, and I'm sure they haven't been found. And I'm sure some people have found them and are hoarding them because they're afraid of disclosure laws. Uh, and getting you know sued or you know thrown in jail under CFAA violations or what have you, and they're just ho hoarding them. And well, that's what's going to happen. But what now. you're People saying is that the laws are actually effective in that case because if I have a vulnerability, I'm not going to use it because someone could disclose it and then I could go to jail. Well, so what you do with your vuln is you sell it to a government agency if you're in the U.S. and feel so inclined, or you sell it overseas for more money to be used against us and. Either way, you're you're covered, right? You make money. Vulnerabilities get out there. They're disclosed once Stuxnet is found, and we all live happily ever after. Or there's another option, and that is the last resort of all vulnerability researchers is full fucking disclosure. And yes, I said the F word because it's important and it needs to be said that that is a full, full disclosure. I said full on Paul Security Workly. Um, put that explicit tag up because I said the word full. It needs to be said. It needs to be left. It's, it's still an option, right? If you want to get stuff fixed and you don't care about glory, you don't care about fame, you don't care about money, and you just want to protect your users, full disclosure. But so let's say everyone did no full. Buts. Let's say tomorrow, and we've had this, believe it or not, Space, we've had this discussion on the show before. If everyone who's holding on to some kind of zero-day vulnerability and or exploit decided on a day and said, you know what? This day, it's going to be O-Day. That's going to be zero day. And zero day, day is day, when we, day, day. we release everything. We release all the zero day vulnerabilities and exploits and we release carnage on the internet. And yeah, it would take some time. Those things would be fixed. But then... Well, let me say, look, hey, full disclosure happens as a last resort. Okay, it's not your first option. Well, it couldn't be. I would prefer it wasn't. Go to your vendors first. Talk to them. If they work with you, great. If they don't work with you, if they give you this cold shoulder, if they threaten to sue you, then you go full disclosure. Now, if everybody takes all their vulnerabilities that they have stockpiled over the last 20 years and goes full disclosure all on the same day, I don't know if the mailing list can hold up under that. I think that, would be, first, I think first, that would be pretty epic. I always thought that it would be epic, point. and I would love to see it. Yes, that's my point. That is exactly my point. It would be epic, and I would love to see it. Burn the world down. Yes, and then we rebuild, and then until it's it happens again, day. it's like yeah, it's, and, and the problem, it's like iterations in the Matrix. We build it, it yeah, burns but, down, we build but, it again. It's but not we'll realistic. We probably won't see it. We'll we'll probably never see that because many of these vulnerability researchers that have a ton of vulnerabilities actually have three different motivations. One, money. Let's sell the vulnerabilities and see how much cash I can get. 
Two, ego, let's see if I can get my name out there and get people to notice me and say, hey, I did this, I found this. Uh, here, well, look at me. We're talking about Google again. Hmm? Yep. And, and the other one is like, yes, I actually want to fix this. But the problem is that those that actually want to fix it is the minority. Hmm. I have a hard time with this article, Paul. I mean, what the fuck? Really, why are we even posting this? Because um, honestly, it takes... Too many liberties. I mean, look at these vulnerabilities. These ones, wildly massive in scope. Yeah, maybe. Okay. Heart bleed. I mean, I, I, I exploited that in my job, right? But what did I get? I got some data leakage. Was it useful all the time? No. Depended on the memory architecture of the system I was dealing with, right? So, I mean, I think th I think this article, you know, that's one case. But I think this article takes too many liberties with it. It's kind of a, an alarmist article. And I'm like, fuck it. I don't, I'm, I'm, I'm not there. Sorry. No, it's, it's, it's so refreshing, Joff, to hear you completely trash a story. I love it. I love it. Yep, yep. <laughs> uh, now, now, all right, let me go down the list. Shell if it was shock. so bad, Joff, how come you couldn't exploit it more? <laughs> Shell shock. Uh, hold that thought. Shell shock, okay, yeah. It, it's a bad one, right? But the availability to get at the shell has to be there. Okay, yeah, that depends. That one's not, it's a one. It depends on a lot of things to get a hold of that. Windshock, I have no experience with, so I'm not going to comment on. Um, the Kerberos checksum vulnerability, I have very little experience with either, so I'm not going to comment on that one. But just on the basis of those first two, I have serious problems with this article. It's bullshit. Yeah, I agree with Joff. Yeah, Sorry. thank you. Game well, over. isn't that implied by Boondoggle? I mean, what? No, this is a, a different. Bit tongue Jeff, in cheek keep anyway? up, man. Boondoggle was like three articles ago. Oh. <laughs> Drink. Oh, day. Good to see everyone is on point and sharp there at Schmookon. Oh, oh yeah. day. And, and, and you know why I agree quite a bit with you, Joff? Because, um, because you love me, man. That's what it not is. Not only that, but <laughs> what Wingchuck actually achieved was DOS. Um, to this day, I haven't seen nobody actually get shell out of, the, of it. You, what you're only doing is crashing Windows boxes. So how are you going to take over the internet by crashing Windows boxes? You know what now, my pick, if, if, you know what if my they would have mentioned Carlos? BGP and the problems with BGP that we currently have and... Uh, our problems with trusting everybody when it comes to SSL and we have X amount of registrars out, out there more than we need, then I would have said, yes, the article's correct. But what they have stated so far, no, nah, they're just blowing air up my skirt. No. Exactly. You know what, hey. though? You know what, though? This article could have been much better and described the complete fall of the Internet and reliable execution if they had just talked about Corel Draw. Damn it. It's a big freaking deal. And with that, we're going to take a short break, come back, and wrap up the show. Wow. <laughs> oh, just Paul, why aren't you in DC? Yeah, we need Paul at Shmookon. Oh, my God. This would have been awesome if we had everybody in the same place. He's still awesome, but whatever. I know he's not listening. I'm there in spirit. I'm there in spirit. You can't hear me. So I'm just going to call you a big doo-doo head. I heard that. Here. We heard that. <laughs> <laughs> Look at that glow off that noggin. Thanks, everyone, for listening. Thanks to all of our fine guests and hosts on Remotely. Fine. Awesome. We can switch, we switch to them. We switch to them. Let's get one last look at all the sexy people on via Skype. Joff Thayer, Carl's Perez, uh, Space oh, Frog, right. Jeff Mann. That's, that's Jack's beard. Steve's there, Jack's there. Retro 90s on Paul's Security Weekly is what it's been saying on their, on their screen. Space Frog, it's uh, been fun as usual uh, debating and talking about the stories for this week. Yeah, Thank I've had you. a good time. The alcohol helped. And yes, remember, when you're at ShmooCon, guys, make sure you tell everyone about the importance of those Corel Draw vulnerabilities. Extremely important. It's yeah, from message. 1990. Seven. My message. 100 million users, damn it. Yeah. <laughs> Buyers, not users. Contest. Win a free t-shirt. Answer the question, what was Paul drinking on the show? 
What was the cocktail that Paul was drinking on the show? Email PSW at Security. But it wasn't an old fashioned. PSW at SecurityWeekly.com. Over and out. <laughs>